Hello everyone, hey Pastor Terry here, and welcome to Summit Church Fenton's Midweek Bible Study. I'm so glad that you joined me this evening, and hey, tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish a two-part series on handling pressure, and of course I started it last uh, Wednesday evening, and if you, missed, if you missed it, I'd recommend that you go back and listen to it. It would be helpful to you, and of course you can find it on our Facebook, our YouTube uh, pages, at uh, Summit Church Fenton, or you can uh, go to our website at summitchurch.us and click on Pastor's Messages, and you can find it there. But I would recommend that you go listen to it because I, I think I shared some good things that, that would be helpful, helpful for you as it pertains to uh, handling pressure. Uh, so I want to conclude uh, this series this evening. You know, pressure is something that we all deal with, and particularly now here in the United States, uh, you know, with all that's going on with the COVID and the economy and all of that, uh, this is a message that I think will, will be helpful to you uh, because we all need to know how to handle pressure. And of course, I'm using for, uh, for the scripture uh, that we looked at it last uh, Wednesday evening. And actually, I'm using the same scripture for our main for our main scripture on uh, Sunday mornings on Jesus's healing crusades, and it's Acts 10, 38, which says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And of course, I called attention last Wednesday evening to the word oppressed, and the uh, root word there is press, or we could say pressure, and so, yes, Jesus went around healing people of, you know, sicknesses and diseases and the crippled people and the blind and the deaf and so forth. But he also will relieve us from oppression, you know, uh, pressure. The devil is uh, someone that likes to put pressure on people and watch them squirm. I have no use for the devil. That's the kind of, of, of individual he is. He likes to put people under pressure, bring circumstances into people's lives that cause pressure, and then he likes to sit back and watch them squirm. But Jesus has come uh, to relieve uh, the devil's pressure from off of our lives. So uh, uh, with that said, uh, I made, uh, I think, a lot of good comments and shared things last week with uh, with you concerning pressure. But uh, what I did want to uh, also say and review here this evening is uh, remember that when the devil brings pressure into our life, God will make a way of escape uh, for that pressure, the way to get out of those circumstances that are causing pressure in our lives. And remember I said to you last Wednesday, and it bears repetition here, that when we're under the devil's pressure, we should never make a decision to relieve that pressure. Um, now, when we're under the devil's pressure, we have to make decisions. And so I'm not saying that we should never make a decision when we're under pressure, but we should never make a decision to relieve that pressure. Because when we do, uh, you know, it's oftentimes it's just a shortcut, something that we do to get the pressure off. But then once that pressure is off, you know, then we, we tend to have to live with, with a, a situation that, that we're not happy with. I, I used as an example last week buying a, a car. A lot of times a car salesman will put us under pressure and, uh, and, and, and we know that, yeah, we probably can't afford that particular car, but that pressure is on from that salesman. And, you know, sometimes people will make a decision to, you know, get that salesman to stop pressuring them and they buy a car that they really can't afford. So they relieve the pressure of the situation uh, of that salesman's pressure, but now they're stuck with a car that they can barely afford. So that, I think that's a good example to show what I'm, what I'm talking about is yes, we have to make decisions under pressure, but uh, we, we should never make a decision to relieve pressure. Um, you know, when we're under pressure, as we'll see here this evening, we, we, we can seek the Lord. He has a way of escape. And that's what we need to do when we're under pressure is, is, is seek the Lord, find out from him 
what we need to do his way to relieve the pressure. And, and as I said last week, I want to say it again, that when we make right decisions under pressure, um, not only will it relieve the pressure, but those decisions that we make that God leads us to make uh, can have far-reaching and glorious effects like we saw with the Hebrew children last week, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember, they were under the pressure of, of, of going into that fiery furnace if they didn't fall down and worship the statue of Nebuchadnezzar when the music played. You know, they could have bowed down and and uh, uh, when the music played and relieved that pressure that they were under and they wouldn't have had to go in the fiery furnace. But just think about the, the, the effects of that. They would have bowed down to an idol. My goodness. But they refused to do that. And, uh, you know, under pressure, uh, they, 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 didn't, they didn't make a decision to relieve that pressure. They, uh, uh, you know, they went into the fiery furnace. And remember what they said before they went in there. They told Nebuchadnezzar, they said, you know, we're not going to bow down. And we know God can deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow down. Boy, I like that. And uh, in the fiery furnace they went. But, you know, remember, the Lord Jesus showed up in that furnace. And, and the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't get burned up, you know. And uh, they came out of it alive and well, not even smelling of smoke. And it affected Nebuchadnezzar in a positive way. And they got a promotion. So, you see, they didn't make a decision to relieve the pressure they, uh, you know, they, they, they didn't relieve the pressure. And uh, as a result, glorious things happened, which were far reaching and, and, and good. And they got a prom promotion, as I said. So, so when we're under pressure, we don't want to make decisions to, you know, relieve that pressure, but rather we need to find out from God the decisions we need to make. And then, uh, and then ultimately we'll get out of that, that pressure will leave and, and we'll, uh, we'll be in a situation which will have good effects, not only on us, but very probably on other people, okay? Now, having said all of that, I told you last Wednesday evening that we were going to look at three things that Jesus did uh, to relieve pressure when, when the devil hit him with pressure, three, three things that he did, and so that's what I want to get into this evening. Let's go to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Matthew, the fourth chapter, and let's pick up with verse 1. Uh, this is when Jesus uh, was being tempted by the devil. Uh, uh, notice verse 1 says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And remember, uh, I said to you last week, but it bears repetition, temptation is pressure, is pressure. It's, it's, it's pressure to sin. It's that's what temptation is. It's, it's, it's pressure, and that pressure can be very heavy. And so uh, the devil was pressuring Jesus. And in, in verse 2 it says, And when he, Jesus, had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Uh, now when the tempter, that's the devil, came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Now, interesting, just just something here that you can learn about the devil, is that he will hit you with pressure when you're most vulnerable. Uh, you know, Jesus hadn't, hadn't eaten for 40 days. He'd been fasting, and notice the devil hits him in the area of food. So just something that you, you need to uh, know about the devil. The Bible says that we shouldn't be ignorant of the devil's devices, lest he get an advantage of us. So just realize that when you're um, very vulnerable to something, that's when the devil is most likely to hit you. And that's with, with pressure. And that's what he did here with, with Jesus. And also it's interesting here too, that the devil uh, uh, was, was hitting Jesus in the area of identity, of who he was. And uh, you know, if you are the son of God, and you know the devil, something else about him is that he will come and hit us in that area and he'll try to uh, knock the self-esteem out of us and so on and so forth. So you just need to realize that about the devil. And he's a creep. I have no use for him. But, uh, but that's how he operates. 
Thank God we have victory over him through the Lord Jesus Christ. But that being said, he, he was hitting Jesus not only in the area of food, and, and you, let me tell you something. I can talk a little bit about being under, under pressure uh, where it pertains to food. Uh, now, nothing like what Jesus went through here, but I tell you what, you know, uh, for years and years, um, I, was, I was way overweight and uh, just struggled in that area for years and years and years. And uh, I tell you what, then, I tell you, you know, there's nothing quite like pressure in the area of appetite and food. And I mean, you know, uh, I'd make a decision to, you know, to lose the weight. And, and uh, you know, then I'd, uh, and usually I'd make that decision right after I'd eat a great big meal, you know, when I was full. And I, I'd say, well, you know, I'm not going to eat. I'm going to go on a diet now. And I'm going to lose all this weight. And, you know, about three hours goes by. <laughs> <laughs> maybe some of you out there know what I'm talking about and uh or you know my wife would make a big thing of brownies and uh, you know I'd say well I'm gonna go on a diet here right after I eat about 17 brownies you know <laughs> you know I laugh about it but you know what when 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 the tummy starts growling uh you know it's hungry you know several hours later you know it's not really a laughing matter and uh, I mean, I struggled in this area and uh, just pressure. And, and I tell you, after you, you get into a diet there for just, just you know, a, a little while, oh, the pressure to eat. I mean, the, 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 the food starts crying out to you. I mean, you can smell a cracker from 100 yards. I mean, it, the pressure is just, but you know what I found about it, out about it is that after I, you know, through the help of the Holy Spirit, and and I and you know, I tried to do it on my own through willpower for years. It never did work. But when I relied on the Holy Spirit, made a quality quality decision, and just leaned on Him, and uh, He helped me greatly. The Holy Spirit did. And you know what? After several days, you know, went by, and really after I guess about a week went by, that that pressure that was on me to get that that food, it started to ease and ease, and ease. Now, the first, about the first three, four, five days, it was, it was no fun at all. But, uh, you know, after about a week or so, that, that pressure started to relieve, and, and get lighter, and lighter, and lighter, and, and then, um, and then, of course, I brought exercise in, into it as well, and <laughs> I tell you what, that was a whole nother thing. I mean, the temptation to not go into that work, workout room, and, and get on that bow flex and do those sit-ups and on that treadmill and all. But, you know, the pressure did not do that. But, um, um, you know, when I went, when it was time to go exercise, that, that, that easy chair I have in, in, in the living room was crying out to me to come have a seat. You know, and then, of course, the bag of potato chips was crying out to me too. But you know what? Through the help of the Holy Spirit, you know, I just made that quality decision to go into that work room and, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit helped me. And as I, as I continued to exercise, uh, actually that pressure to not exercise left. And actually I, 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 I've, I've got almost addicted now to exercising, which is a good addiction. And so uh, I, I work out, uh, in the weight room, uh, uh, like every other day or every couple of days. And, and I, I'm able to run about five or six miles almost every day. And, just around the neighborhood, and and um, uh, so the spirit of God really helped me, and I was over able to overcome uh, the the weight problem and that pressure of food and all of that. Uh, so it's doable, it's doable, and it, and I went from weighing about I don't know about two hundred and thirty five, two hundred forty pounds, and now I'm down to about one hundred sixty eight, and, and I've been able to maintain it over over the last six years. So it's doable. I'm not sharing this to pat me on the back. I'm just saying that that you know I know what pressure is like in the area of food and weight, and hey, if I can overcome it through the help of the Holy Spirit. You can too. God's no respecter of persons. He'll help you just like he helped me. But but it is a fight, but it's one that we can win with the help of the Lord, okay? So uh, 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 Jesus um, was hit in the area of, of food. 
And uh, notice how, but now I said all that, let's get down to how did he overcome? How did he overcome the temptation and, and this pressure? Notice how he did it, verse four. But he answered and said, it is written. So he did it through knowing the word of God and, and, and quoting in the word of God, confessing the word of God. Notice what he said to the devil. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So when, uh, and you know, I, I use that verse a lot when I was, you know, dealing with overcoming the temptation to, to eat, eat, overeat and eat bad things for my health, you know. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Um, and it, it's just, it's just, uh, this is, this is, this is one way that you overcome the devil's pressure is by knowing the word of God. And when the devil hits you with pressure, you hit him with the word of God. Okay. And uh, you, you'll watch that the devil will flee and that pressure will lighten. Um, then notice the devil took, so, so knowing the word, quoting the word. See, Jesus quoted the word to the devil and, and, and in this situation with, with uh, the bread. Now notice verse five. Then the devil took him up in the holy city, into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, there it is again, if you are the son of God. So he's continuing to question his identity. And then he says, throw yourself down, for it's written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they'll bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And of course, you know, I'm not going to take the time here to get into this verse, you know, at, at this time, but it could teach on it for quite a bit. But, you know, the devil can take the scripture and, and, and twist it just a little bit and, uh, and deceive, deceive people. And, and that's what he was trying to do to Jesus right here. Actually, he did a similar thing to Eve back in the, you know, back in the Garden of Eden. But uh, you got to watch the devil. He knows the word of God and he knows how to just, you know, give the word and then just put a little bit of twist in there with an untruth and, and, and people can be deceived very easily. But, um, but he was trying to get Jesus Notice he said, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down for it's written. He'll give his angels charge over you in their hands. They'll bear you up and so forth. And, uh, uh, you know, let me just say this. You know, if I went up on my roof of my house and just jumped off and said, you know what? Angels, catch me, protect me. You know, if you're really there, you're going to catch me and just jump off. Well, guess what? I'm going <laughs> to splat and that's the end of me but if i'm up there uh shingling the roof now you wouldn't want me shingling the roof but if i was up there shingling the roof we'll just say or up there for whatever cleaning the gutters or whatever and uh now i can clean the gutters pretty good but anyway and, and if i accidentally slipped now that's a whole different thing now 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 the angels i believe they're there to help okay so you, you, you got, maybe that'll help you understand this verse a little bit better. But uh, uh, notice uh, he, he, he's questioning, questioning Jesus' identity and all that. If you're the son of God, the angels are there. Throw yourself off of the temple. Actually, you really think about this. The devil was really tempting Jesus to commit suicide. If you really think through it. You know, now I've never been... Uh, 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 tempted to commit suicide, but I but I've talked to people who who have been, and and I mean that is a that is a terrible terrible pressure that the devil can put on on somebody, and uh, because I've talked to people who've been under that over the years, and uh, that's a terrible terrible pressure. But notice when Jesus was under this pressure, how did he? get out of it. Now he's our example. So, you know, we, we can learn from what he did, do the same thing and, and, and it'll work for us just like it did for him, for the Lord. Notice how he hit the devil in this area, just like he did with the bread. He said, verse seven, it is written, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. 
See, so how is Jesus getting out of these situations of temptation? He's doing it with the word of God. And then notice verse eight. And again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Now, think about this. And he said to him, all these things, he said to Jesus, all these things I'll give you if you will fall down and worship me. Now, the devil got that authority from Adam. God gave it to Adam. Adam gave it to the devil. Now the devil is offering this to Jesus. Now, you know what? Uh, you know, Jesus was tempted in all points like as we are, yet he never sinned, okay? Now, this thing here, I mean, th this one right here, you think about that. You know, I've been tempted. We all have, okay? But uh, I don't think we've ever been tempted like this to be given all the, the really all the, 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 the like spiritual authority and power over the, the planet. My goodness, think about that. Think about the pressure that Jesus was under. He said, all these things, the devil said to Jesus, verse nine, all these things I'll give you. I mean, think about it. Verse eight, uh, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said, all these things I'll give you if you'll fall down and worship me. Now you think about that. I mean, all the kingdoms of the world and all the glory, all the money of it, all of it, you know, you know, you could argue the money of this, all the power and all that. Fame and all that, I suppose, all that you could put in there. You think about temptation. Now, you think about that. You think about temptation. But you know what? Again, Jesus hit the devil with the word of God. He said, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only will you serve. And the Bible says, then the devil left him. See, the pressure then was relieved, but it was relieved in the right way. Now, now think about this. When Jesus is being tempted with this glory of all the kingdoms and all of that, just think if, if if he would have bowed down to the devil. Just think about that. Mankind would have been lost forever, abandoned into a devil's hell. Think about that. How that would have affected you and me and all humanity if Jesus had bowed down to the devil right there. No, no doubt he was under pressure. It was a legitimate temptation. The Bible said it was. But Jesus didn't, watch this now, Jesus did not uh, make a decision to relieve this pressure. He, he didn't make a decision to relieve the pressure. Under the pressure, he made the, the decision to quote the word of God, to hit the devil with the word of God, see? But now, if Jesus had made a decision to relieve the pressure he would have taken a shortcut to the to the glory and and all of that of the kingdoms but it would have look how it would have affected not only Jesus but all humanity but Jesus didn't take the shortcut he hit the devil with the word of god the pressure ceased anyway and ultimately Jesus after he was raised from the dead got this glory and power and authority. He took it from the devil. He didn't bow down to the devil and worship him to get it. He blessed God. He, the Bible says he, he, uh, uh, he, he took that. He took the keys of hell and of death away from the devil. And Jesus came out of that tomb on resurrection morning and said, all authority in heaven and in earth has been given unto me. So he got this glory and power anyway, but he didn't get it by making a momentary quick decision to relieve the devil's pressure. No, he stood up under the pressure. He hit the devil with the word of God. The pressure relieved anyway, but then down the road after Jesus died on the cross and was risen from the dead, he got this power. He got the authority the right way, bless God. And, and as a result, it, 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 
won all of our sal all everybody's salvation that'll believe and trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that exciting? So let's don't take shortcuts uh, to relieve the devil's pressure, but under that pressure, let's stand up under it with the help of the Holy Spirit and 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 hit the devil with the Word of God. Now you got to study the Word of God to know what you know, and then have the leading of the Spirit of what scriptures to use when the devil's hitting you. But let's hit him with the word of God. And then verse 11 said, the devil left him. And that means the pressure ceased. Glory to God. And But it's interesting, you know, now we read Matthew's account, but Luke's account, Luke's account says that the devil left him, left the Lord for a season or for a more opportune time. And, and, and that means the devil come <laughs> come back later. And he did come back later to the Lord Jesus and, and tempt him and so forth. But... Uh, uh, but Jesus, of course, always withstood the devil's pressure. And you know what? Uh, so we learned the devil will come back just because we're in, in one pressure situation and, and we come through it. The devil will hit us again. But you know what? You can get better. I said this last week, but I'll say it again. You can get better at handling pressure. The more you're under it, the more you deal with it. You know, just like those athletes I talked about last week, you know, the, and I've noticed it myself in, in playing golf and tennis and different things over the years, particularly when I was younger and competitive stuff. You know, uh, at first I wasn't very good at handling pressure, but, you know, you get under the pressure, you learn how your body operates and, and the adrenaline and this, that, and the other, and you can get better at handling pressure. And uh, so so uh, the same thing's true with the devil's pressure. You can get better at handling it. Now, let's look at the second thing Jesus did uh, to relieve the, the pressure of the, the enemy. Look at Luke 22, verses 39. Uh, well, let's start verse 39. Luke 22, 39. Uh, Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. Now, this is right before he went to the cross. Okay, this is in the Garden of Gethsemane, all right? Uh, which I, I think Gethsemane means uh, oil press, I think. So you could call it like a, a, a that word Gethsemane. I think it means oil press. It means a place of pressure. So Jesus was in a place of pressure. This is right before he was arrested, you know, and, and then ultimately went to the cross. If you talk about pressure. And notice here in verse 39 of Luke 22, coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives. And, uh, of course, that's where, you know, he's going to be in the Garden of Gethsemane here. But nonetheless, as he was accustomed, his, his disciples followed him, okay? And he came to the place. When he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. So first thing Jesus did was use the word to relieve the pressure. Now the second thing we see is prayer, prayer. But now listen to this. He says to his disciples, pray that you may not enter into temptation. Now let me paraphrase this. Pray so you won't give in to pressure. So prayer is a, is a very, very vital tool that we must do uh, in order to relieve the devil's pressure. Okay? And uh, so time in prayer. Um, I, I, I'll say this. Uh, the time to overcome sin is not when you're being uh, tempted to sin. The time to overcome sin is in prayer, really before the pressure ever gets to you. Um, you know, I, I've learned that in, in, in my life over the years. Is if we'll go into prayer and consecrate and dedicate ourselves to the Lord, then, uh, then when that temptation of the devil hits us, you know, down the road, will be prepared to withstand it. So prayer is a vital tool in overcoming the devil's pressure. But notice when he came to the place, Jesus came to the place, he said to the disciples that, that were with him, you know, he said to Peter, James, and John, he said, pray that you may not enter into temptation, okay, or that you may not, temptation, pressure, that you may not enter into pressure. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, see, Jesus is praying. He said, Father, if it's your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So what Jesus is doing, he's submitting himself to the will of the heavenly father, which he'd always done. But this time here, he, he never sinned. Jesus never sinned. Uh, this may have been the closest he ever came. He never sinned. But I mean, he was under some pressure here because he says it, 
you know, if it's your will, you know, I don't know if, uh, uh, if, if this rendering here in Luke, maybe it's in Matthew's or Mark's, but, or John's or whatever, but uh, if there is any other way, Father, if there's any other way, you know, uh, you know, because he's looking at going to the cross. He said, if there's any other way, take this cup from me. So he's under tremendous pressure. But notice he submits his will to the will of the Father. He says, if it's, if it's your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. An angel appeared to him from heaven. This is uh, Luke twenty-two forty-three, 43, strengthening him. Thank God for angelic assistance. And being in agony, notice his agony. Agony, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. See, prayer is a tool to overcome the devil's temptation. Uh, then his sweat, be look at, the, you talk about pressure. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the, to the ground. You think about pressure. I've never been under that kind of pressure. He was sweating blood. He was sweating blood. Keeping his, you know, the devil left him for a more opportune time. Well, here's one of them right here. And Jesus is under the pressure. He's under the pressure to step out of the Father's will. If there be any other way. But thank God he prayed more earnestly, kept himself submitted to the will of the Father, but he's sweating drops of blood. I mean, striving, the book of Hebrews says, striving against sin, standing against it. And he's standing against it through, through prayer. And then verse 45, when he rose up from prayer, he, had, he came back to his disciples and found them sleeping. Now, you know, a lot of times people, they'll joke around with this, say, well, yeah, the disciples were over there sleeping. Well, they were. But notice what they were sleeping from. They were sleeping from sorrow. Now, you, that word sorrow, of course, it means heaviness, grief, and it also means stress of mind. See, the, the, the disciples were not sleeping as a result of a natural sleep cycle, which, you know, we all need every 24 hours. We need, you know, seven or eight hours of sleep, you know, varies for different people. But they weren't sleeping because you know it was it was it was time to go to bed, and they weren't sleeping necessarily just because they were tired. Now their bodies probably were tired. I, you know Jesus and his disciples traveled a lot and a lot of walking and all of that. But that's not why they they were sleeping. The Bible tells us why: from sorrow, from stress of mind. You know. You can get under, a person can get under so much stress, so much pressure, that 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 that, that pressure of uh, and that stress of the circumstance uh, that you may be in, the financial pressure or, or, or whatever it is. You know, one thing I've noticed is, let's just go to bed. Let's just go lay down. Let's just go pull the covers over our head. Let's just go to sleep. You know, the stress is so heavy, let's just, let's just, let's just, you know, let's just do nothing and lay down and go to sleep. You know what I'm talking about? And that's why they were under such pressure, the disciples, right along with Jesus, they were under pressure, under, under stress. And uh, Jesus told them to pray. Jesus was under that same stress, but he prayed. He didn't give in to that, that grief and that, that, that better way to say it, that stress. He prayed through it. He prayed through it. The disciples didn't. They went to sleep. And, and, and as you read, you know, the other accounts, uh, three times, if I'm not mistaken, three times this scenario played out where Jesus would go pray and come back and they'd be sleeping. The pressure, I mean, it was, like I said, it was so, so great that Jesus, the Lord himself, sweating blood. And the disciples, they, see, they gave into it and they went to sleep and he told them, pray, pray. And notice here in verse 46, he said, why do you sleep? He said, rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Or 
paraphrasing it, get up and pray, the Lord told them, so you won't give in to pressure. See, they were giving in to this pressure by going to sleep. Again, sleep is good. It's wonderful. But this sleep was something that they should not have given into. It was not a natural sleep cycle, as I said. It wasn't even really a result of them just being, being tired from exercising a lot or whatever. It was from this stress. And uh, see, that's a whole different thing. When you're under that, that stress, that pressure of the circumstance, and you want to just, you know, just give up, get, just, just give up and go to sleep. No, don't do it. No, don't do it. Stand on the word, quote the word, and pray. And that's what he told him. He said, why do you sleep? Rise up. Why are you sleeping? Rise up and pray, lest you enter in or lest you give in to pressure or temptation. And uh, let me read from my notes. A lack of prayer resulted in the disciples giving in to pressure. And notice what they did. When, the, when the, they came out to arrest Jesus, they all forsook him and fled. Now, see, they gave in to pressure, and, and as a result, they fled. I mean, uh, and you can relate it back here to, to, to not praying as they should, but when, the, uh, when, when that, that uh, garrison or that, that those Roman troops and all came out to arrest Jesus there in the garden, such pressure, see, the disciples, all of them, they gave in. And, and, and they fled. They, they forsook the Lord. Uh, something, isn't it? Now, thank God, you know, Peter, he repented and, and uh, he was under pressure. I mean, remember, I mean, shortly after this, you know, they, the girl said, girl or a couple of little gals there or whatever noticed him and said, yeah, we know who you are. And, and, and he, you remember that? And, and Peter denied Jesus three times. He gave in to pressure. What pressure he was under, you know. If he if he identifies with Jesus, he he knows he's likely to to be arrested as well and cost him his life. And and he gave in to pressure, you know. So, uh, but the good news is is he repented and uh, and the Lord forgave him. So even if we do give in to pressure, you know, we can repent and the Lord will forgive us. Oh, he's gracious, isn't he? But nonetheless, uh, Jesus used the word of God. And he used prayer to overcome the devil's pressure. Now, the last one here, in the time I have left, uh, now notice this. this. This is very, this is something really, they're all good. But this, notice this, John the 8th chapter and uh, the second verse. This is when the woman taken in adultery, caught in adultery, was brought to Jesus. Remember the religious people caught her in adultery and they, brought her to Jesus, threw her down in front of him and so forth, you know, brought her in front of him. And, and notice here, uh, let's see how Jesus helped handle this uh, pressure situation. John 8, verse 2. Now, early in the morning, he came again in the, into the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. And then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And actually in the very act of it. And when uh, they had set her in the midst, they said to him, teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, or we could say pressuring him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. Now Jesus is in another pressure situation. Remember the devil left him? for a more opportune time or other opportunities. Well, this is one of them. And the devil can work through people. And now he's working through these religious people here to pressure Jesus. And this they said in verse six, testing or pressuring him that they might have something of which to accuse him. Now notice what Jesus did. When Jesus, But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So, you know, people want to know what he was writing on the ground. I don't know what he was writing on the ground. All I can do is, is speculate. You know, I've heard different theories on it. But uh, one thing I would say, when, when the finger of God writes, Jesus is God. When the finger of God writes, you see it in the Old Testament. He wrote the Ten Commandments, didn't he? You know, on the tablets for Moses. Is it possible he was writing the Ten Commandments? Could be. 
Is it possible that he wrote about, you know, those people there that were accusing this woman? Is it possible that he wrote the Ten Commandments and then maybe wrote, you know, some of these people that were there accusing her? Maybe he wrote their name out to the right of, you know, thou shalt not steal or, or you know, thou shalt not bear false witness or thou shalt do no murder or honor your father and your mother. And maybe some of them there didn't do that. Maybe he wrote the Ten Commandments and wrote each of their names by the side. I don't know. But nonetheless, uh, that's not the point right here. The point is, how did he handle this pressure? So he stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. Now, I believe, I think it's clear, what was he doing? Notice he didn't, he didn't say anything right away. He, uh, he, he, I believe he was waiting on the Holy Spirit to lead him. Remember, Jesus was God, but in the earth here, for that 33 and a half years, he didn't operate as God. He operated as a man anointed with the Holy Spirit. We read that in Acts 10, 38. So I believe right here, he's waiting on the precious Holy Spirit to lead him and guide him. Because you got to realize this, he's caught in a, he's caught in a trap here. It's a catch-22. You know, uh, they said to him, Moses and the law commanded that uh, such should be stoned, but what do you say? So think about it. If Jesus says, if he says, don't stone her, then he's contradicting and violating the law of Moses. Okay, because someone taken in adultery was to be stoned, all right? So if he says, don't stone her, he's contradicting the law of Moses. Now, if he, if he says don't stone her, then he's counter, contradicting that. If he says stone her, then he's contradicting what he'd been preaching about love and forgiveness. You see what I'm saying? So he's caught in a trap. He's caught in a catch-22. If he says don't stone her, uh, violating the law of Moses. If he says stoner, now he's violating what he's been preaching all along here about love and forgiveness and turning the other cheek and so forth. So now how do you answer? Well, <laughs> well, what you do is, is you bide some time and wait on the Holy Spirit to give you the answer. Okay? And notice verse 7, while he was doing that, writing on the ground as though he did not hear, uh, they continued asking him. They continued pressuring him. That's just like the devil and people that yield to the, to the devil. They were just continuing to keep the heat on, the pressure on. And he raised himself up and said to them, now watch this. Nobody, nobody saw this one coming. This is the coolest thing, one of the coolest things in all the Bible. He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Wow. So now with that answer, see, he's not violating the law of Moses. He didn't, he didn't say not stoner. And he's not violating what he'd, he'd been teaching all along about love and forgiveness and turning the other cheek. What a slick, cool answer that, I mean, that is a slick, cool, fantastic answer that the Holy Spirit gave, gave the Lord Jesus. My goodness. I mean, that just thrills me. He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And you know, if he was writing the Ten Commandments and if he, if he was writing those people's names that were there accusing her out to the right of the ones they'd broken, you know, how powerful would that have been? Now, I don't know that he wrote the Ten Commandments. I don't know that he wrote their names to the right. I don't know. But I do know this is a slick answer. Because he because he get he gets out of this catch twenty two the Holy Ghost got him out of this catch twenty two because uh, he's now he's not violating the law of Moses and he's not violating what he'd been uh, what 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 he'd been teaching on love and forgiveness you know when 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 the devil gives you a test when when the devil gives you a test and there's two choices a and you know it's wrong b and you know it's wrong. And, and then the devil doesn't give you C, D, you know, and so forth. Well, what you do is you just wait and wait on the Holy Ghost. Just wait on him and listen to him. And I tell you what, when there is no, you know, you know, A is wrong, B is wrong, and there's no, there ain't no other letters to choose from. I tell you what, the Holy Ghost, he'll come up with that. He'll come up with C, you know, 
He that's without sin among you, cast a stone at her first. And he, and the Holy Ghost, I mean, he's so wonderful. He might not only come up for you, he might not only give you a C, he might give you a D, an E all the way to L, M, N, and P. You know, I mean, uh, there's no telling. See, but if, if you choose A to get the pressure off, or you choose B to get the pressure off, well, you get the pressure off, but you got the wrong answer. You fail the test, right? Wait on the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and and he'll show you, he'll lead you, he'll guide you, and he'll give you the right answer. He'll give you the way of escape. And that's what he did for Jesus here. The Lord, he gave him the right answer. He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Now watch this. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. So he didn't take, I mean, you see Jesus in all these three instances that we've looked at, he, he never took the shortcut. He never made a decision to relieve the devil's pressure. He never made a decision to take the lid off that pressure cooker, you know, that we talked about last week. He just stood there. He stood on the word. He, he prayed uh, to, to his heavenly father and, uh, and, 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 and he's listening to the Holy Spirit. See, these are ways to get out of the devil's pressure. He never took the shortcut. So notice he says, he who is without sin among you cast a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, now watch this, being convicted by their conscience. Did he write their names next to the 10 commandments? Could, could be. Because they're being convicted by their conscience. They know they've all sinned. Went out one by one beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. Notice the pressure ceased. And, uh, and he didn't take a shortcut. He didn't violate the law of Moses or the law of love, either one. And he got out of that pressure situation. And I'm sure that lady was really, really uh, glad, glad also. Wow. Cool, a cool, cool thing, isn't it? Wow. So, hey, if you're in a pressure situation, pressure cookers on, devil's turning up the heat, and you've got, you know, you know, you know you've got a few ways to go, but you know they're all wrong, hey, Wait on the Holy Spirit, okay? Pray, stay in the word of God. And I tell you what, you stay in the word of God, you stay in prayer, the Holy Spirit, you lean on him, he'll give you the answer and he'll make the way of escape. And the pressure then will cease, it'll cease the right way and you'll be better off for it. You may even get promoted like the Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but something good will happen to you and it could happen to, something good could happen to, to your family or people around you as a result. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed this teaching tonight on overcoming the devil's pressure on handling pressure. I trust it was a blessing to you. It was an honor for me to get to share it with you. And hey, don't forget, now, now next Wednesday night, I'll be back right here with, with another subject and we'll, we'll continue on studying the Word of God. Don't forget Pastor Diane's um, uh, message coming up here Friday evening on the Beatitudes. She always does a wonderful job. And then this next Sunday at 10 o'clock, Summit Church Fenton, hey, come and be with us and we'll continue studying and looking at Jesus' healing crusades and we'll have a, have a great time with it. And hey, remember, uh, if, 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 uh, you've listened to this and you're being blessed by it, I'd encourage you to share it with your friends. Okay. All right. Hey, God bless you. And we'll see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.